already built your VCO and looking for more? Here's what's next in a series of DIY kits I developed in collaboration with Erica Synths, our dual VCA. Like the VCO before it, this circuit is based on a design I developed in one of my videos, though it again includes a few minor tweaks and improvements. Which is why this schematic in the accompanying manual might seem familiar if you've seen that particular video. It's still a transistor-based design with a differential pair at its core. If you're stumped on how this type of circuit works, no worries. In the manual, I gradually explain my way from volume knobs and voltage dividers through basic transistor amplifiers and sketchy pseudo-VCAs to a full-blown voltage-controlled differential amplifier. And though we do again include an extensive appendix introducing many basic circuit design concepts, I would suggest you pick up the VCO kit first if you're a complete beginner. Simply because looking at transistors this in-depth can give you a hard time if you're still trying to wrap your head around voltages, currents and resistances. Still, to make these theory-heavy chapters more digestible, we've set up a ton of example circuits in a circuit simulator called CircuitJS. The cool thing about CircuitJS is that you don't have to install anything. It simply runs in your browser. So by clicking one of these links in the footnotes, you'll be able to jump into the simulated example circuits straight away. Here, you can play around with component values or even rearrange the entire circuit to test your assumptions. Of course, the manual also again provides an array of suggested breadboard layouts, allowing you to try the essential ideas and concepts in real life with real components. Just like with the VCO kit, all you need in addition to the components in the box and a breadboard are just a bunch of jumpers, two 9 volt batteries and clip connectors. Then you can test out everything, including the full-blown VCA design. Of course, the kit again includes a pretty matte black PCB and panel, allowing you to put the whole thing together as a Eurorack compatible module. As you can see, we managed to squeeze not just one, but two identical VCAs into this pretty slim module. Which means that the PCB is quite crowded. Keep this in mind if you're a complete soldering beginner. Might again be smart to start out with the VCO here. Since I sometimes get asked what a VCA is actually good for, let's go through a couple of interesting use cases. Generally speaking, VCAs have two different types of inputs a signal input and a CV input. The way it works is that the voltage we send into the CV input will control the amplitude of whatever we send into the signal input. You could think of the VCA as a volume knob that can be controlled with a voltage. To try this, I'll take my oscillator and patch it into the VCA's signal input. Then I'll set this envelope to loop mode, while dialing in a very long release and attack. This causes it to continuously send out a rising and falling voltage. If I now patch our looping envelope into the VCA CV input, you can hear the volume of our oscillation rise and fall in sync with the envelope's status LED. It's as if the envelope is turning an imaginary volume knob back and forth slowly. And while this is already quite useful, it gets really spicy if a bit confusing when we use the VCA to modulate a CV signal. The thing about modular synthesizers is that even though we distinguish between audio and CV signals, in the end they're all just voltages. So for the VCA it doesn't matter if I feed it an oscillation or a sequence from my sequencer for example. It'll still scale it up and down as the voltage coming from our envelope rises and falls. To hear what that sounds like, I'll send the VCA's output into our oscillator's CV input. I'll then take my oscillator and route it through this low-pass filter, which will control with the same envelope we're using on our VCA. And here's what that sounds like. Sounds almost like an echo, doesn't it? Only problem is that it kind of fizzles out at the end. 
To prevent that, we can use the VCA's offset knob. The offset knob allows us to set the default amplification level of our VCA. When it's turned all the way to the left, the VCA is closed at 0 volts CV input. And that's why our sequence dies out when the envelope drops too far. By turning this to the right, I can make sure the VCA is always open to some degree, making the echoing effect sound much better. So that's our dual VCA kit. If you're interested in picking one up, it's now available at select retailers. There's a list of links in the description. As always, thanks for watching and until next time, see ya!